Well, since this documentary first aired last November, the marijuana landscape in the United States has shifted even further. Recreational marijuana is legal. It's a sign of marijuana's growing acceptance. A self-described stoner. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a professional stoner. Weed has become a popular topic in today's society. Smoking, buying, and selling almost seems encouraged in today's pop culture. The list of benefits seems endless as it is a natural pain reliever for big ticket illnesses like MS, Parkinson's disease, and cancer. However, there is another side to the effects of marijuana in individuals. We sat down with Jean and Mike to gain another perspective. So I'm Jean. And I'm Mike. And we are marijuana addicts. And I've been sober for six and a half years now. At five, didn't change, five and a half. Yeah. We met at a meeting. Yeah, we met at a 12 step program. I had a crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. So I, I slow played it. <laughs> we went to a couple of shows together and found out that my favorite band is one of his favorite bands. Mm -hmm. And I decided at that point that I was going to marry him. I mean, not really, but like in the back of my mind, I think that was the moment that I knew. Gene and Mike are both members of a group called Marijuana Anonymous, or more commonly referred to as MA. MA is a fellowship of people who share their experience, strength, and hope with one another, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from marijuana addiction. MA, Marijuana Anonymous, has been around for maybe 30 years at this point. It started out in like California. So out on the West Coast, California and Oregon, kind of around the same time. But there wasn't a meeting in Baltimore. But the person I was sponsoring, you know, he was not an alcoholic. He just didn't drink alcoholically. He could only really think of one time where he got, like, too wasted and, you know, had a bad go of it. But, you know, he was a pophead. And no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't quit on his own. It's funny because I think for a lot of marijuana addicts, you're in the gray area between AA, which is Alcoholics Anonymous, and NA, which is Narcotics Anonymous. It's like AA is for alcohol, NA is for all drugs, but a lot of marijuana addicts feel like I don't fit in with people who are doing hard drugs. You know, like marijuana is is just its own beast. And, you know, when people are talking about shooting up, you know, you've feel kind of weird being like, yeah, I just smoke too much weed, you know? And so we were finding a lot of people needing this place for specifically marijuana. Being an addict is no small feat. Every day is a recurring battle that most can't fight alone. However, what are you supposed to do when the world keeps telling you your life-sucking disease doesn't exist? The myth that marijuana is an addictive is one that comes with serious consequences, one that denies people being consumed by the smoke help. With marijuana, there's so much misinformation out there just because people kind of confuse physical dependence and addiction, I think, is one thing. That doesn't mean just because some, a substance isn't physically dependent doesn't mean it's not addictive. And I think now that we know more about the brain and addiction, what people said back in the 70s about not being addictive has been disproven, you know? Like weed, like any other, you know, serotonin, dopamine manipulating drug, it rewires your brain and your pleasure system. And so, you know, it hijacks your, your system and that's what, you know, Coke does it, sugar does it, like, all of these other drugs that, that we've decided are addictive do the same thing that weed does. So I think that it's, it's definitely time that people stop spreading that, you know, weed isn't addictive rumor anymore because I think it's, it's definitely hurting people. We're not trying to tell people not to get high. We're trying to let people know that if they want to stop and can't, that we're here. For those struggling with addiction, people like Mike and Gene are always there ready to provide a helping hand and a strong support system for those who need it. All you have to do is show up to a meeting. For me, what I love about the group, you know, as Mike was saying before, there are people who can do it on their own, and I was not one of those people. And there's something to me about feeling like an outsider my entire life. And when I came to 12-step groups, I felt like I had found my people. You know, there's like this kinship that like we all went through this thing that we all understand. It was one of the most painful, if not the most painful thing any of us experienced. 
and we all helped each other out of it. And now, you know, I no longer feel like I have to search for external things to make me feel okay, make me feel happy. Like kind of the happiness that I have inside me is like, it's portable, it just goes with me anywhere. And the advice that I would give is just show up, you know, show up to a meeting. It doesn't cost any money. Nobody's going to, you know, you, you don't owe anybody anything. Just show up and listen and see if some of it resonates with you. If the first one doesn't, maybe come back a second time. Literally, the only thing I did right was to keep coming back. And, you know, it's, it's amazing that something so wonderful comes with no strings attached. MA truly is a wonderful place where people from all kinds of backgrounds come together to fight for a better life and way of living. We end our interview with Mike and Jean with the Serenity Prayer ritual held at the end of each meeting reminding each member of their purpose before returning to the outside world. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Keep coming back. It works if you work it. (laughs)